John chapter 6, verse 3. I'm going to continue this morning with uh, the series that I've been teaching on war on Jezebel. Lift your hands and say, war against the spirit of Jezebel. Do you believe if, you, if, if Jezebel were here, we'll go like that? War against the spirit of Jezebel. What is the militant part? Say, war against the spirit of Jezebel. Shout it more. One, two, three, go. There you go. There you go. Okay, John chapter 6, verse 53. I want you to read this verse. This will be my introduction before I continue in my teaching. 653. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say it unto you, Unless you eat my flesh, the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. That is a hard thing to say to a Hebrew. What about if I'm standing here and I tell you, if you don't eat my flesh, if you don't drink my blood, you cannot be my disciple. You will be very offended. But what he's saying in that particular verse is, in a very simple word, you must be totally committed and surrendered to me. That's what he's saying. In other words, he asked for commitment. That's what he said. He said, I want you to be totally submitted and totally surrendered to me. And they kind of didn't like it. Verse 54. And then he said, whose eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. Verse 56. He has eaten my flesh and drink my blood. Dwell in me. In other words, there's a relationship. And I in him. Verse 57. And then he said, And as the living Father sent me, I had lived by the Father. So he eat me, even shall live by me. Verse 58. This has the bread. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers as ate manna and are dead. But he ate his blood shall live forever. The bread shall live forever. Verse 59. These things said in the synagogue and he taught in Capernaum. Verse 60. I want you to see that verse. Many of his disciples, therefore, when they had heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? What does that mean? This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? In verse 61, when Jesus knew himself that his disciples murmur at it, <laughs> he said unto them, does this offend you? Why it was so hard to hear? Because there are truth in the Bible. There are truth in the Bible. I want you to hear me with your spirit. The Bible is the truth. And there's so many truth from the Bible. Sometimes for some people is hard to hear. And the Lord said to me, the days are coming when you will say truth from the pulpit that not many people will receive. Not many people. In other words, there's going to be this distinction that many people will stand and leave the church because to them is too hard. I say some things from the pulpit last Sunday and I already like two, three, four people left the church as you hear it because they put nationality, culture, race and political party more important than the truth. We cannot be political motivated. We must be righteous motivated. Put your hand together. Give Jesus a big praise. I'm going to say it again. 
I'm going to say it again. There's some truth that I will talk that many people would not, it's too hard to take them. It will offend them because they would think this is too tough, this is too hard. So because they're offending my culture, I, I am very careful because I fight for multiculturalism. I stand for the white, for the black, for the Hispanic, for the Asian. I stand and I fight. And when I hear, I hate racism. Because I've been, I've been, I've, I've been, many people have been prejudiced with me. I fight. But I will never allow my nationality, my race, my culture to be beyond the word of God. Can I hear an amen, people? So I see myself. I am first Christian. I am second, listen, before you do, I am Christian. Second, second, I am an American. Proud to be an American. And three, listen, if I have a political party affiliation, I am whatever, <laughs> Democrat, Republican, but I am first a believer. And I will never put my, the truth beyond my political party, beyond anything. I stand and I've been with government officials, I've been with presidents and prime ministers, and I always tell them the truth. And I will tell you as my children, as my sons and daughters, I will always tell you the truth. If that offends you, I'm sorry. I will not apologize one ounce. I wanna hear amen on that. I'm not going to apologize one penny. So I just want to tell you because I want to prepare you because things that I will say, I will expose this spirit of Jezebel. I don't have the time to go to the whole review of who is the spirit of Jezebel. What is his assignment? But I will go very quickly. Jezebel is the wickedest woman in the Bible. Jezebel was the son of a man that, that he was dedicated and devoted to the God of Baal and Ashtaroth. Jezebel was known because her purpose of if you use in the spirit, Jezebel is not a person or a woman, is a spirit. And I was, I, I don't have the time. I want you to get the tape because you need to listen to it because this spirit is literally uh, destroying. It's the number one destroyer of homes, families, divorces, church divisions is this spirit. If I can tell you the whole thing and I can give you some statistics and this spirit is about three things. I can give you his assignment, but it's about three things. If you can put me some, some data that we get and you see three things. You will see idolatry, sexual immorality, and the killing of babies. Those are the three things that two, four thousand, six thousand years ago, those spirit, that spirit was about that. And you will see, for example, if you see marriages, stats, almost 50% of all marriage in the United States will end in divorce. And the reason is because the spirit of Jezebel is behind it. If we go to idolatry, if I can go to idolatry, you will see so many things. And idolatry. Can, you, can we go to uh, the part of idolatry? And then you see how many 1.5 million people are practicing witchcraft. 1.5 million people are practicing witchcraft. I want you to open your eyes because this spirit of Jezebel is inducing, is introducing this nation in the past. His purpose was to destroy Israel, to remove the God Yahweh into the God of idols, into the God of Baal, into the God of, of, of idolatry and witchcraft. So if you go to witchcraft, combine stat, stats, statistics from Western nations, but there's so many, over one million and a half people practicing witchcraft. If you go to killing babies, I think we over already 60 million Babies have been killed in the womb for abortion. So sexual immorality 
the baby in killing babies, and idolatry in witchcraft. So I told you last time, what is Jezebel assignment? Undermine set authority. Number two, this is important for you to write it down. Number two, this spirit em emasculates men. Meaning that the test of a spiritual manhood is Jezebel. How you stand against this spirit. So literally remove men's masculinity and reduce it to nothing. This type of man, they're very successful in business, in their job. They're successful in every area. But in one area, there's zero. As the father of the house, as the, as the head of the house, and as the priest of the house. Anything that have to do spiritually, this man is reduced to nothing. Number three, I'm going to go quickly. You can get the tape in, in the bookstore. So he, this spirit emasculates men. Number three, this spirit steals legacy. In other words, the Jezebel spirit, the Jezebelic spirit is stealing the, 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 the legacy of your children, your legacy, your natural and your spiritual legacy. Can I hear amen on that? Amen. Number five, it seduces into sexual immorality. I just show you the stats. Number five, to establish her own dominion. And number six, his supreme goal is to control, is to dominate. Number seven, this spirit shuts down true worship. This spirit shuts down true worship. We have to be on top all the time in our worship. Because this spirit comes to shut down true worship to the living God. This is one of the purposes. That's what uh, the music is so, is so critical. Worship to be on top because that he goes after the musicians, after singers. Because wants to contaminate the sound. Number three, her or his assignment is to destroy fatherhood. That's where you see fatherhood. That's where you see many orphans in this country and in the world. Because this spirit is assigned to destroy fatherhood. Number nine, this spirit kills prophet, apostles and prophets. These are the two foundations of the church. Her assignment is to kill apostles and prophets. Because these are the two mantles that deal with the spirit. And these are the two mantles that expose the spirit. So that's why they hate. That spirit hates apostles and prophets. So this is literally the review of what I studied. Jezebel assignment. And also what, what was the, this woman and I described. Now today I will speak to you on... Um, how to identify the spirit Jezebel. How do you know you have it? <laughs> I'm going to say it again. How do you know you have it? Because in any area, men and women that I know for 30 years in ministry, I have seen how this spirit has used people, uh, controlling people or using men and women to control people. To manipulate. I have seen how pastors manipulate their churches. I have seen how they in the family, how little children manipulate their parents. I have seen in many areas. In other words, do not just say I don't have anything. Because you can have an influence. You can have something of that spirit in you. I wish I can hear an amen. So there's several marks that uh, identify this spirit. And for you to identify it, I can identify by my experience. When I see somebody, I say, mm, that person has that strong influence of Jezebel. Or I can see, for example, I can see by discernment. Can I hear an amen, people? Amen. So we can call Jezebel uh, to anybody that have a strong character. No, we can't. Because that doesn't mean it's Jezebel. But we have to have discernment. Acts chapter 16, verse 19. So I, through this teaching, I'm exposing to the light the work of this spirit 
and the damage that has caused to the church, that has caused to the families. Many of you now are the result of, of, of this controlling spirit, this manipulation and control, the spirit of Jezebel. So um, there's, there's something important I want to mention before I enter in the topic is this. The spirit of Jezebel cannot come into a person or into a territory unless she or he, whatever you want, is not a woman, but I'm saying is a, is a spirit. Unless that spirit has a legal right to enter. And I want you to write it down, please, because that you will identify if there's some issues in your life. Number one, the entry points of the spirit of Jezebel. Number one, unresolved emotional pain. This is very serious. Unresolved emotional pain. I'm going to give you a list of emotional pain on people. Rejection. Unforgiveness. And I can give you a list of 20. Uh, rejection is one of the deepest pain in the soul. So if you have unresolved emotional pain in your life, you are a secure target of Jezebel. As a matter of fact, this spirit is rooted, is rooted in pain. You remove the pain and the legal right is gone. The enemy is gone. So you have to think yourself. There's any unresolved pain, painful experiences, abuse, things in my life, unforgiveness that I have not released. Because if you don't, you will be a secure target of that spirit. If you remove the pain, you remove his influence. Number two, dysfunction of families. I discover that every person that has been used or is being used by the spirit of Jezebel comes from a dysfunctional family. Number three, this is important. Generational curses. What do you mean generational curses? Generational curses, you have seen the grandmother she was the one that literally ran the house. She was the head. She was the one controlling everything in the house. Literally, the husband was a zero man. And then comes to the mother. And then comes to the daughter, granddaughter. So this, this generation of curses, that spirit can come. Not only through emotional pain, but also through curses. In other words, if why were you? If you come from a home that you saw your grandmother controlling your grandfather. If you saw your mother controlling your father. I would look for a deliverance. Because there's a curse there. You sound so excited today. So there's a curse. It's reality. In other words, sometimes we hear the truth, but we don't do nothing about it. I just wanted to tell you, if you have unresolved emotional pain, you are very, and this is what happened. You literally have unresolved emotional abuse, pain, and then you go back and get married. When you get married, you carry the same curse to control your husband and it repeats again it repeats again in other words don't think you will continue with your pain and nothing will happen because your pain is an invitation to the spirit of Jezebel to come into your life well because if I don't hear an amen I'm going to finish so how to identify how can you identify this spirit I'm going to go quickly 
because I have so much to cover. The identification, how to identify the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel is a wicked woman. The spirit of Jezebel used this woman because there was pain, generation of curses, and dysfunction of families that will come upon this woman. And the majority of time is women. Why? Because women are more susceptible, more sensitive to the pain. Men or men, we are more logic. But I've seen also men being used by this demonic spirit too. But I'm saying for the women because you're more sensitive, more to pain. So how can we identify it? So for example, we have to make, we have to have this 16, Acts chapter 16, verse 19. We have, must have discernment. And when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they cut up Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Verse 20. So why is that? Why is that? As a matter of fact, let me go to, uh, let me read something very powerful. How this spirit is called in the New Testament. Acts chapter 16. And this is what they said. Acts chapter 16 verse 20. And they called Paul and dragged him into the city. And verse 18. Can you put it verse 18? But Paul being grieved turned and said unto this spirit. Can you go to verse 17? The same follow Paul and us, crying out, saying. In other words, the same spirit. Can you go to verse 16? I'm sorry. And he came to pass, he went to pray a certain demon possessed by a spirit of divination. Spirit of divination. Can you put the translation that it says, Python spirit? Python. Python, the spirit of divination, is a spirit that, that declares the future. But actually, they don't know the scripture, it's just a lies. And that Python spirit, there you go. And they came to prayer, and the spirit of divination, claiming to foretell the future, events, and to discover hidden knowledge. In other words, Python, this type of, of snake, don't kill her prey with poison. No. What does it do? Huh? Choke. Wait, what else? Suffocate. Right, constrict. Have you been in your home while you feel constricted? I wish you can hear me. Have you been in your finances yeah you feel your finances constricted even in your physical body have you felt that you feel like you can't even breathe and you don't have no natural cause apparently you never had this because python spirit this is the same jezebelic spirit when a woman or man is using, is being used by this spirit. This is the type of environment in a home. They will feel constricted. They feel suffocated. They feel like they don't have peace. They feel like something is going on. There's a pressure. That's the word. There's a pressure on you. A pressure. You don't sound like you're here. There's a pressure. So this uh, python spirit say with me python say in the name of Jesus I cast out python spirit say it say it so you take authority you know you have authority over it so what so we see that in the book of Acts comes in the form of a divination I want you to hear me so now we go through the whole Bible and you see witchcraft. 
you see a divination, you see astrology, you see fortune teller, you see so many areas, witchcraft. Now, I want you to see now, what are the marks? What are the characteristics? What are the marks of, of a person under that influence of the spirit of Jezebel? Or how can we identify it? Number one, she is driven by insecurity. One of the threshold of Jezebel's spirit is that everything she does is driven by insecurity. That is the driving force. The motivation is insecurity. Everything, a person that is influenced by the spirit of Jezebel, everything she does or he does will be by insecurity. I will save money if I get sick tomorrow. I will do this. In other words, everything is insecurity. Every insecure person is jealous. Every insecure. So, in she is, listen to this. Jealousy is the root of insecurity. Jealousy is the root of insecurity. And insecurity is wrong security exposed. What do you mean? She uses insecurity to mask her wrath. She only has a plan B because she is mad. Insecurity causes a person to make their world safe. She wants to be in control all the time. An insecure man doesn't know who he is in God and always wants to be in control an insecure man this is very very because we talk about Ahab the husband of Jezebel Ahab means a weak man a permissive man I know wives and women that literally tell their husband what to do when to do it, it, they exercise a total control at home. So I have an announcement for you. If you're doing that against your husband, you are Jezebel. And I, I'm going to speak to the husband. You are Ahab. Ahab is a weak man that permit and allows things in your home. You are the head of your home. You have to take authority in your home. I want to hear a big shout better than that. So number two, insecurity. Any Jezebelic woman or men are motivated by insecurities. Anything they do, they want to protect their position. Their, their security is in what she, they, do, they do, not in who they are. If you remove what they do, they collapse. Because their security is in who they are and, and what they do. Two, what is the other mark? Jezebel seduces people to commit sin. Any kind of sin. In other words, another word to describe it, to compromise the truth. The purpose of this spirit is to create an environment to break covenantal relationship with God and family. The purpose of this seduction, in other words, there's people that will come to seduce you, not only sexually, not only it can come to seduce you, for you to compromise the truth, for you to lie, for you to say something. I don't understand how a leader of this ministry, and this comes to my mind, it's not because I know any case, but this has come to my mind. You can exaggerate your numbers. And you give a report to mall and mentors online, 
and you lie about your numbers. You've been seduced to lie. That is a Jezebelic spirit. You were seduced to compromise. We know that to obey that person is to disobey God. Can I hear an amen, people? So I can go more and more into seducing. Number, number three, number four, five. I don't know which one it is. The spirit is fertile. How do you identify it? Not only is a seducing person. Seducing means to compromise the truth, to sin in any area. To, for example, that spirit will come to seduce you for you to quit believing. That spirit come to you to, for you to not to come to church. That spirit will lie to you and they will tell you, don't go to King Jesus' ministry. Go to the other church because he knows we will cast them out here. Yeah. 